What is up, Internet world, and welcome back to Accelerate. My name is Mike, and the man behind the camera is Ian, and today we're bringing the 2023 Land Rover Defender 130. In the 2023 Defender 130, P400 with 395 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque. Foot to the ground, let's go, draggy. And to 60, we got 7.24 seconds. Ooh, not bad, not bad. It sounds really good. Like, listen to this thing. All right, let's try one more attempt. 7.24 seconds. Can we beat 7.24 seconds? To the ground and a bit of boost. Go. This should be better. This should be better. This should be better. Let's go. Go, 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 go. What do we got? What do we got? Seven. Come on. Come on. 6.81. Damn. So let's say you decide to throw an event and 100 people show up and six of them are awake. Everybody else is sleeping. That is what's happening with our channel. Only 6% of you subscribe, and that is pretty disappointing. Now, I understand only half of the people in the world may like you. So where are you other 44% that have to hit this red button? Hit it. So we've shot two Defenders here in Accelerate. We've shot the 90, which is the two-door version. Oh and then we've shot the 110, which is the four-door regular SUV that everybody knows. But today we bring you something different. This is the 130, which means it's a little bit longer here. It is now offered as a third row, which means you can fit a whopping eight humans. And that opens the door because not a lot of SUVs sold today can offer that. Eight humans is a lot of people. It's always seven. If you want something that fits eight, you generally have to buy a minivan, but not anymore. The Land Rover Defender offers a whopping eight for the third time. And the reason most YouTube reviews have this color is because it's called Sedona Red and it's exclusive to the 130. Now the 130 gives you a ton of features that is optional on the 90 and the 110, but in the 130, you get most of that stuff standard. Now we're really not a big fan of this color. Let me know in the comments below if you are, but for me, I need to get white with all the bags, the saddles, all the accessories. This thing's just a little bit too bland for my liking. So the Defender is available in five different models. The first one's the P300S, which has a starting price of $68,000 Americano. Then you have the P400SE, which starts at $78,300. Moving up next is the P400X Dynamic SE, which begins at $81,400. Then you have the P400 First Edition, which is this one right here. And then you have the Top Dog, that has a starting price of $99,100. And that is called the P400X. And that's crazy, because it's almost six figures. So if you want to dig a little bit into the front, if you haven't watched any of our other videos, you have these cool little LED rings that are daytime running lights. But the cool part is though, it has washer fluids in the front, so it cleans this headlight. Below it, you have the fog light that hides there, pretty normal stuff. You also have your front camera hiding right there, and then you have pure parktronic sensors. These guys actually pop up when you shut the car off because then it's not hard to clean it when there's snow. That is thinking, Defender. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. I would have liked to have this in black and not silver, but that's just me, not you. To the side. Well, if this is your first hurrah in the Defender world, I will tell you that the new Defender, not just this one, but the 90, 110, and this 130, has now got a new revitalized construction. It is no longer body on a big frame like a truck. It is unibody construction. It no longer has solid axles it has fully independent suspension. Now, what all that means is that it has a smoother ride and it's more car-like and less truck-like. So some people hate on that, but the reality is, is that buyers are probably gonna use this for the mall. And that's why this has air suspension and it can raise and drop its ground clearance from 8.6 inches 
all the way up to 11.5 inches because when they go in that underground parking lot, they have to drop it because this has a very, very high and tall stature. This length is 211 inches long. That is the same length as a Yukon. And 13.4 inches of extra length happens right here to here compared to the normal Defender. The Defender has something called an ultrasonic water wade depth gauge. It can wade through water up to 35 inches, which is higher, or let me tell you this way, it can go through more water than the Jeep Wrangler. And another thing it does is the engine sucks air right here. Well, the other side. But look at the height. Look how high it is. It's like an undercover snorkel and it's hidden right here. Now, as far as wheels, you can get them in 19s, 20s, and 22s. This one has Scorpion winter tires and I will tell you it is so good in the snow and it's horrendous outside. That's why it's dirty. Now, aesthetically speaking, it is a beautiful looking truck if you get in the right color, but this Wait a minute, is it a truck or an SUV? I'll let you guys comment below. But this little housing here is really small, really small side mirrors. It does how this 360 camera house. You do have a little button here and a button here. That's when your keys are in your pocket. You walk up to it, you press the button, it'll lock or unlock and you can get in it, which is a nice touch. On the back here, you have this little box here that breaks up the vibe of this Defender. I will say though, this would be a lot cooler if it had the British flag on it, like the Mini, if I'm being honest. And if I'm being honest, I'll tell you that this is a massive C pillar. This thing is so bad, the blind spots are huge. People complain about it like crazy. Now they do help and they add a small piece by adding this rear view mirror camera. It's wide and this is probably the best rear view mirror camera I've seen in any vehicle that we reviewed. Now this has some major G-Wagon and Ford Flex vibes with this long, upper design, no sloping going on. The height right here is exactly the same as the height up front, which is super unique because you can't get it in many vehicles out there and that's what makes this Defender something to consider if you like this type of design. So to the back, the main reason that you guys are gonna watch this video is for this part. This is the difference maker and this is why this video exists on the YouTubers. So if we start in the back here, again, square edged, very similar to the, all the other Defenders. There's not much change here. You have this nice big full size spare. You've got this black piano trim, Defender in body paint color. And of course these funky lights that draw our eyes. Then you have the Defender first edition. You have this tow hook on this side and on this side as well. You have the Land Rover badge and of course Parktronic. You can tow 8,201 pound with this Defender. Now let me show you how to get into this trunk. It's not a trunk that goes up, it's a trunk that goes out just like the Bronco. Anyways, if you wanna pull this thing, it doesn't work. You have a little rubber thing here that you push and then it opens up. Kind of tricks me when I look at it. Now, as far as opening, it opens up just about till there. So with the third row up, you have exactly 16 inches before the door hits it in the back of the head. Now, if you've got something big and you want to load it, this thing has air suspension, so it will drop. You have two buttons here. I will drop this thing. Boom. Now I can grab what I have to grab and I can put it in fairly easily. So it's right here. I'm five foot eight and a half, almost five nine is what I tell all the ladies. It's right here. I can put it in easily. Now, there's some serious business going on here. 40, 20, 40. The cool part about this Defender is I can pull this up and I can drop it. Well, when that headdress goes down, I can drop it and I can have a straight run through. So I can put my skis all the way down because the second row and the third row in the center drops down. So you can fit six adults, three on this side, three on that side, and you can go skiing. So here lies the problem slash a reason for why they did this. So let's talk about the problem first. The problem is this. You have this bump here. So if you have to put a suitcase that's larger than this 16 inches I talked about, it's gonna be at an angle. It's just gonna kink out. This is the weirdest trunk situation when you have to put stuff that is flat. If you're putting you know, groceries, whatever, it's no big deal. So people have actually ordered this in a five passenger and want this extra depth. They don't need these third row, but here's the deal. The kids in the back will benefit because they actually sit higher. It's like theater seating. They sit in the back, they sit higher. Most manufacturers don't even care about them. They just put the seats, they fold in the floor, they're easy, but the kids sit so low, they can't even see out the windows. And I'll talk a little bit more about that when I'm sitting in the third row, but I'm gonna point it out when you're here because it depends on what kind of buyer or what kind of user you are for this Defender. If you have something large, large boxes, well, you can't really put them because they're gonna kink this way. Like, look, this is so high. And in terms of height, if you can't see it on camera, 
it's about four inches. So let's talk about how long this is from the back of the front console. Wow, it's almost seven feet. You've got seven feet. Oh my God, that's crazy. Anyways, when you're back here and you wanna plug stuff in, what types of powers do you have? Well, you have a three prong plug right there that has 180 watts of juice. And then you have a cigarette lighter back here. Now I will say there is no USBs here for the third, third row. I couldn't find them. I couldn't even find them for the second row. Yeah, I kid you not. Third row and second row in this specific one does not have any USBs. And we looked pretty, pretty hard for this thing. It's wild. Now getting into the third row of this Defender is done this way, very similar to an Audi Q7. There's a handle up here, I pull it, and then the seats slide forward. And then I have this plastic sort of trim piece on the bottom so I have grip. Now there's two of them. I put my foot here, I simply get in. It's very easy to do this. No complaints there. Quality of the seats, very, very good quality. They do slide backwards and forwards when they go up and down. They're not just simply a clink, they actually slide this way. So it's a nice touch on how these things are built. But back here is interesting. So there are a few things to say. One is again, like the original Audi Q7, I have an independent sunroof for everybody in the back. Third row, that's a thumbs up. I have venting right here, thumbs up. I have three increments of heated seats for me in the back. I also have a little storage thing here where I can put some stuff and then I have a nice cup holder. The fit and finish is really good, but there are some downsides. Again, I mentioned in the back, there is no USB. Like what's up with that? No USB, no USB-C. That's kind of tough to swallow, especially for kids in today's world. <sighs> That's tough. But anyways, back to good stuff. Big glass, big window. I can easily see outside. Some domestic products this size actually have a window right here where I have to look like this. It's kind of annoying. That's tough. Another positive is you can fit three independent car seats because you have a seat belt that retracts from the top for the third middle row. Nice. Everything is good. Nothing really to complain back here. Again, just no USB or USB-C. But other than that, everything in the second row is jolly. You can move these seats in two increments. The first one is this and the second one is this. So they do recline, they do slide backwards and forwards, obviously. The fit and finish of everything else is amazing. The leather is nice to touch. You've got two little cup holders there. You've got nice big headdress for everybody in here, designed for adults, not just children. You do have two center vents as well as a vent up on my head on both sides. You have heated seats per left and right side. And of course you can adjust your fan speed and all the rest of that stuff. You do have little map thingies. And yeah, that's pretty much about it. Nice, decent size sunroof. Nothing really else to say except for you're in this massive big boat. So if you get hit from the back or the front, there's probably 20 feet of damage before it gets you sitting right here. Front seat of the Land Rover Defender. So this is different because if you looked at other Land Rover products, it has a dual screen, but this one has an 11.4 fancy screen right here. So one screen does all your radio CarPlay, obviously, because it has wireless CarPlay. Underneath you have all these weird buttons and I'll get into that. But we'll start off with this magnesium beam that runs from end to end. It creates not just a visual aspect, it actually has some structural integrity built into the car because of the beam and it gives you this extra space like a storage compartment and a handle as well you can hold on either side. Kind of cool. The overall theme of the Defender is not a lot of buttons. The most buttons really is in the door and right here. Other than that, there's not much anywhere else. So if you start for the door, you have three memory seats. You have obviously automatic windows on all four corners and then of course lock and unlock. Then on the dash, the only button you really have is the electronic parking brake on the left side. There's a lot of stuff on the steering wheel, but that keeps you in your lane, cruise control, and of course picking up cell phone when they call. In this specific model, there's no heads up display, but you can get it. You also have this nice wrapped leather piece that goes from end to end, really, really good quality. And I like the way it looks, no complaints there. Now we'll talk about the screen in a minute, but let's talk about what's underneath it and how it kind of works. Volume, the volume is all the way on the right side here for the passenger, not the driver, the passenger. They need to move that over here underneath the start and stop button. Then you have the shifter, which is up here. It kind of reminds me of when Honda changed their Civic from having their SI shifter up here. And everybody's like, why would you put it up there? And this is exactly the same thing. It's in a really weird position. And depending on your seating position, it actually blocks the screen a tiny bit. But what is weird and confusing to me are these two rotary toggles. 
When you turn them, they do have climate control, left and right, pretty straightforward. When you push them down, you have your ventilated seat when you turn left and your heated seats when you turn right, left and right. But then you have these buttons in the middle of them. The left one actually does your drive modes. You push this button and then you turn and then you have your drive modes, all your different drive modes, like nine of them. And then the button underneath it is your fan speed. And you hit this button and then the right side controls your fan speed, which is really weird. The left side controls the drive modes and the right side controls the fan speed. I just find that really confusing. The most direct buttons here are your air suspension modes. Very simple, on the left side you have your up and your down, pretty straightforward, but everything else is just a little bit too confusing for my liking. And moving down from there you have your USB-C, your USB, and then of course your cigarette lighter. This is the only USB and USB-Cs in the whole eight-seater truck that we're in. Kind of strange. And underneath that you have lots of storage, all good, very rugged, very durable, very easy to clean. Behind that you have two massive cup holders and then you have a wireless charger that can fit any phone larger than a 14 Max Pro, which is a thumbs up. And then there's your center armrest that does not slide backwards and forwards, but it is wide and is long enough to accommodate any elbow. And underneath that you have your fridge, which is cool. You have two increments of power or coolness, I guess. When you activate it, there's an LED light that comes on letting you know that it is on. To the screen. So let's take a deep dive into the screen, but we'll start off with how fast it activates when you put the reverse camera on. Now when you first start the vehicle, generally most people reverse out of their driveway or just reverse in general. I would say probably 50% of people don't start off getting their car moving forward. It's always backwards. And the time it takes for this thing to come on when you put in reverse is a good six seconds. I kid you not. That's my first complaint about it. Now with that said, when the vehicle is running and you put it in reverse, it's very, very fast like this. Look how quick that is, it's excellent. Now, not only that, but the quality of it's really good. Here, check this out. When I hit any of the side buttons, there's your 360, and it's nice in that beautiful color, not this red. Look how nice that looks, sweet. Very good, very easy to use, and you have so many different angles. There's your rear camera, there's your sides, there's your fronts, does a very, very good job. Very happy with it, quality's excellent. But there's more features. Check out the off-road feature here. It has this water wade. It looks basically through the vehicle. We don't do it in this car, but we do it in the other Defender we reviewed. And then next up is towing, and you can see exactly where the hitch is gonna go, so you can line up your balls. So the way the software is set up, you have the left and right side that are fixed. So at the top here, you have different profiles. And then moving down, you have your navigation, phone, and CarPlay. Underneath it, you have four little squares, and that shows you more specific details. So you have navigation accounts, so on and so forth. So we'll dig into a few of them, one being CarPlay. So when I hit CarPlay, this is your favorites, pretty straightforward stuff, but it fills up the whole screen. And then next up, you have a few other things, but I wanna talk about 4x4i, because if you take the vehicle off-roading, you have lots of different information here at your display. You have different departure angles, also showing you your differential locks in the middle and the back when they are on, your altitude and then your bearing. You also have weight sensing. Remember I talked about on the side there, you can see how much height you have for the vehicle if you are going into water and it tells you how much water is actually underneath the vehicle, which is a really, really nice piece. And then next you have vehicle dimensions. That is based on how you set your air suspension. It tells you how long the vehicle is, how much ground clearance you have, and of course the body dimensions, which is a nice touch if you go underground and you need to know how much height you have left before you hit the roof. But my favorite one here is air quality, just because the display is so nice. This is where it shows you your purification of air, your carbon dioxide, and your ionization being on. It shows the air coming in in parts per million and shows if you're breathing good air or hazardous air. So a really good system. Again, the only thing I would complain about is when you get into it, you put it in reverse. It takes a little bit of time and based on your seating position, this may block your visuals to your Apple CarPlay. Considering this thing's so long, it actually handles decently well. Yeah, yeah, Defender. Yeah, Defender. It's hard, it's so ever slightly more bubblier than the 110, but you probably wouldn't notice it. Now people are asking why they don't put the V8 in this massive Defender. It's their largest one. You would expect them to put the V8. I wonder why. I don't have the answer to that, but if you do, comment below and let me know. And don't give me the usual, well maybe there's supply constraints. It might have something to do with the buyer of this one. It might get too expensive. 
where it really crosses over into RR territory, like really deep. That's what I think. Now today happens to be a beautiful day, so we are reviewing three vehicles. This, the X7, and the Sierra. And I will tell you, I've parked all three of those vehicles on the side of the road, and there's tons of snow. Now the Sierra has slippage when I was pulling it out, and the X7 as well, it slipped a little bit, but this thing felt super solid. I got it, and I put it in drive, I hit the throttle, and I pulled out no problem. And that felt the same as the other two Defenders I drove. The small wheelbase and the medium wheelbase and not this long wheelbase. So I can tell you that this thing does have off-road capability by something so small. But the reality is the people that can afford this are probably not going to take this off-roading. They're going to just like it for the style and the boxiness of it. Because maybe they don't want to spend that G-Wagon money and they don't want something as small as a Bronco. This is a choice. It's pretty unusual. I expect them to sell lots of these things. Just based on how popular this car is on YouTube, I can tell you that this thing is gonna sell really, really well. So I hope you guys liked this video, which was fairly short on the drive, but fairly heavy on the interior, because that's why somebody's gonna buy this thing. It's basically because of that third row. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.